Today, I'd like to talk to you about a alternative, a replacement for Mac 3. But also, a bit more than that, I'd like to take you on a journey. How I'm going to implement this industrial controller onto my CNC lathe. It will be a series of videos, depending on how many views I have. If there's over a thousand views, I'll move on to the next video. Uh, if not, I'll just keep working on installing it myself. So if there's interest out there, it will be a series of videos. This will be the first one. I'll explain later. I'll go out in the workshop and I'll explain why I've selected this and pros and cons and all that sort of thing. So hope you stay with me for the series of videos. Depending on when they come out, when I order parts, whether they come back in two weeks or four weeks or six weeks, depends on, on the spacing of the videos. They'll all be in 4K, so as you can see the high quality. So I just thought I'd start off today that the secret is in this yellow box. I'll do a unboxing video next after this video, but with this video, I'll go out in the workshop now, you come with me and I'll explain what I'm doing and why. We've moved into the workshop now and this is not the lathe. <laughs> this is my large manual lathe and I like working manually. I like the creativity of it. However, if the controller works out well and somebody likes to donate me meter and a half, ball screw and nuts, servo drivers, servo motors. I'll be glad to install it and use them, but this is not the one. So let's move over to the one that I'm talking about, putting the controller on, the small lathe. Now this is the lathe I was talking about. It's a, used to be an old lathe mill combination, probably 30 years old. One of the early lathes you can buy, fairly crappy. They say you, you can polish a turd, but I always say if you scratch it with your fingernail, you still can smell it. So it was my first entry into CNC, my foray, you might say, and it's gone through a few rebuilds. Now, as you can see, here is my eight tool automatic tool changer, which I built. This is the basic machine. 150 swing, so it's got an inverter drive, V-belt pulley, small stepper motors. I just want to give you an overview of the costs. Is the electronics box that I'm working at at the moment. It's got a Nevum six axis CNC controller. You think, wow, six axis. Unfortunately, there's some good products, there's some bad products, and there are some bad clones of good products. And I do most of my shopping on eBay, and unfortunately, you only know a seller. He's probably got a little shop at the back of his house where he gets deliveries from the main supplier, and then they give him the on-sell. So information, warranty, just what the wires are, what it does, often difficult. So I brought the Nevum, wired up, problems. You wire it up, and it says it gets in the index and you, you can have the controller control it you can have threading and all this but when you hit forward sometimes it'll start forward <laughs> but sometimes it'll start backwards and you'd have to stop and then hit forward and it go forward sometimes you hit forward and it go forward you hit reverse sometimes it go forward sometimes it go reverse so reliability that could be a complete disaster. Then the other thing, and this is the main reason I explained to you the main reason was accuracy, and the other one was threading. People have trouble threading. Is it Mac 3 or is it the hardware? It all depends, but like I said before, some people have no problems, other people like us, we have problems, and that's where the added costs come in. So you buy an oven board, a bit better, then you find out you have to then, or your limit switches. It doesn't allow you, Mac 3 allows you to have plus limit, minus limit, and home all on the one switch. So I've got it all wired up, one input, X, one input, Z, one input for the automatic tool changer. Three inputs. No, the Nevum. You've got to have one for the plus, one for the negative, one for the home, three for one axis, three for the other axis, one for the home of the ATC, seven terminals taken up instead of three. Plus, you have your PMP, NPN, and you go on eBay, and you find out the most universal ones are cheaper, but now this is your opposite. So then you have to then 
get all your uh, proximity switches, throw the ones you had before out, throw them in and rewire it. Extremely tiny board, tiny connections, tiny wires. So then you have to have the costs of your actual cabling. So now you've got three cables for one axis. So three, seven cables. Then you have to have seven proximity switches. Then you have other costs on top of that, connection crimpers and all that. So it's not, oh, that costs $100 and that costs $200. Nah, you have to buy this, this and this. And this is where the total of the tape comes in. So I had to pull it out, make up, then the relays. The relay boards have to be the low signals rather than the high signal. So then you go up to eBay and they'll say this is a low signal relay board and then you look a bit later and it tells you it's a high signal. So you order one and it's not what they say. So then you have to wait another six weeks, two months, get it swapped over, get your money back. So then your time gets blown out. So that's got to be worth something to you. Then you have to have all your other little connectors and all like that was it. So all set up beautiful. I mean, then indexing works all off the signal. So if you watch my other videos, you'll see where I had the board and the big slot. I run a little magnet in here working out the top speed. I think it's about 1600. So you say, okay, it was spinning at 1600 per minute per second. How many degrees per microsecond does it have to be for Mac 3 to trick of the signal? So the larger you are out, the bigger it has to be because the angle is the same. From there to there is that big, but from there to there is that small. So I then moved it all up so you have to re rebuild brackets and all that. Okay, we do, do all that, we hook it all up, that's fine. But then you have the TAC A in the speed control speed indicator in Mac 3 and it works. But then the indexing signal doesn't work because the never board says the index signal goes into this particular terminal and the other signal goes in that particular terminal. So then you take out the cable, put it in a general input and tell Mac 3, oh that's now my index signal, it works. But then you've got no speed. So the idea was to get constant surface speed. <laughs> so you buy these boards, milling is a lot easier than, than the live work, I can tell you, setting them up. So then you get this board to do this and this, it only does this. Ronnie does that, so that's no good, and that's no good. So then you wasted your 80 bucks for an Evan board. Previous to that, I had a PMDX, and that couldn't do the uh, the surface speed and all this type of thing, and, and then I had the smooth stepper. So you, you buy, you know, El Cheapo like we all do. Oh yeah, that should be fine, everyone raves about it. You put it in, but for you it doesn't work. Then you go up, you go to the next one, and it promises the world, and it only gives you a tiny little island. So your costs keep going up and up. Then you take it out and you put it over there, put something else in. So I've had to rewire this three times. A couple of upgrades. So the bullet, or, the, or like I say, everyone has a bucket. And that bucket gets filled with a drop. And one day that bucket's full. It can be your job, you can quit your job, you can get divorced, you can do lots of things. So I come out, I said, right, just want to do a simple task, switch on the machine, the Nevin board stopped working. So what do you do? And then I went looking at other boards and does it do this and you know, they put, oh, it does that but it doesn't do that. That's why I went for the controller. Now, with the costs, you have to have a Mac 3 license, so you have your license costs. Then you have to have a computer to run it. Then you have to have your breakout board. You have to add all these other bits and pieces that are not included. Then you do not get reliability. The other thing too, accuracy like I was saying, you have your stepper and it sends it, but all, all of a sudden it would stop. And you go, yeah, yeah. and of course, like I said, it's polished, but it, you still scratch it and it's a bit rough around the edges. So what's causing that problem? Is it dropping steps? Is it the acceleration? Is it the Nevin board? You don't know. So you go to a industrial controller and it's designed to work with a minimum type of equipment, but it will always work because people make money with an industrial controller. Mac 3 is great for hobbies. I spent a lot of time with Mac 3. You might see me video the best Mac 3 screen set ever and I really love it but Mac 3 is only part of the whole solution. You've got electronic hardware and that's where the, the controller board, the industrial controller to me is worth the effort. It may turn out not to be fantastic but I think it is got to be 
a lot better. So you say to yourself, all right, how long does it take you to do something? An hour. What is your hour worth? Oh, I'm just doing this or I'm just doing that. Well, you can get 10 bucks an hour or five bucks an hour down at McDonald's. So you your time has to be worth five bucks or ten bucks minimum. So work out all the costs, all the time, and how far you've got chasing your tail. And then you'll realise that putting the investment in, don't forget, there's more expensive controllers than this one, but you put the effort in and hopefully you get the results. And if it works well, I may put it on the other machine later. So this is the machine, stepper motor, one horsepower motor, three stepper drivers, Again, the other problem too, they don't have an alarm on the mill moving along and the alarm is triggered, the red LED comes on and the movement stops. The Mac 3 doesn't even know it's, there's an error. And he's continuing thinking that, <laughs> that the whole table's moved out the way before it goes down and it hasn't. Or the same problem here, it, you may think that the, the table's moved in the Z direction, the X direction, and there's an error and it doesn't know and you just smash something up. So safety, reliability, and then when I fit the linear scales, accuracy. So I'm hoping this is the goal, is that I can program, I can draw up something, go to a, a CAD CAM system, go over to the CAM, click on it, post process, there it is. Bang, come over, put it with the USB stick in, hit go, tool will automatically change, accuracy will be there, I will measure it and it's one inch is one inch. It will go back. If there's an error, nothing crashes, it tells me. So accuracy, repeatability and threading. If that then goes well, I can then invest in the more expensive machine. So this is the prototype, the, the learning curve, the little baby. So this is what we're converting. And if you can do it on a small wave, like I said, the controller box, if you up to 1000 views, you'll see the unboxing of the controller box in that cardboard box and it's about this big. So that's gonna be interesting fitting that. How to hang it, where it's gonna be all that sort of thing. So there's a lot to come, a lot of interesting stuff. Fanboys, don't bother. People who want to learn something, how to improve something, subscribe and you won't be disappointed. So to those thousand viewers out there, thanks for watching. See you on the next video.